Hey guys, Gabe here. Uh, yeah, so y'all didn't like the video enough, so I got turned into a cat. And this is my life now. That's why I'm buying this guy, because I'm so mad at y'all. So please like the video next time. Please! What's up, guys? I'm Gabe, still a developer advocate at Hex, and I'm here to bring you another episode from our course on Hex Foundations. Now, in the last episode, we were diving in head deep into the world of SQL cells. We were showing you guys how to configure SQL cells, how to optimize your queries, and also how you guys can chain SQL cells together. Super cool features and all the tools that you guys need to start analyzing data inside of your Hex projects. Now, in today's episode, we will be looking at Python, and specifically, we will be talking about how Python behaves in Hex projects. We will show you guys how you can use and install Python packages. And lastly, all the different types of variables that we have to use in projects, such as output variables, and environment variables and secrets. And by the end of this, you guys will have a better understanding of how to write Python code inside of Hex and how you guys can change your environment to work with your projects. All right, let's go ahead and get started before y'all turn me to a cat again. Python cells in Hex behave like they do in most notebook-based environments. You can write some Python code and get back our results. So for example, if I were to say something like print, hello, ooh, I can't type today. Hello world and exclamation mark. I should see hello world being printed to the screen and you don't need to explicitly print the output to the screen. As long as what you want to show on the screen is the last is the last statement in your Python cell, you will be able to see what those values are. So for example, if I were to say, hey, I'm not printed, printed. I should see, hey, I'm not printed and hello world together. See, look at those two friends chilling in a cell. And just to show you guys some more examples, we can do something like var equals five. And then we can print var out to the screen and we should see hello world in five. If I were to do like var plus var, we should see 10 now. So this just shows that you guys can, how you guys can print things to the screen. Now Python cells also support the use of packages such as NumPy and Pandas. And Hex has a plethora of pre-installed packages that you guys can choose from, which we can take a look at in our environment tab. So let's head to our environment. And we see right here that we have a whole bunch, a whole bunch of Python packages. Um, based on my calculations, there's gotta be at least, at least three in here. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Now, does Hex have every Python package? No, we don't, <laughs> we don't. But that's not a problem because you have the option to install any number of Python packages with our good friend, Mr. Pip. So let's take a look at how we can install a new Python package in our projects. All right, so let's imagine for a second that NumPy isn't installed in our Hex project. If we want to install it ourselves, we can do so by typing in exclamation mark pip install numpy. And if we even want to install more packages, we can do something like pandas and maybe say matplotlib, and you can install multiple packages at the same time. But if we install numpy, we can run it like this, and we're probably gonna see a requirement already satisfied because numpy isn't indeed installed on a computer. But this is just to show you guys how you can install those packages into your Hex projects. Something to keep in mind is that when you install packages, they're only uh, available for the kernel or session that you're on right now. And we'll talk about kernels in a later episode, but if I were to restart this kernel, for example, which I'll do like this, NumPy will no longer be installed and I will actually have to rerun the cell in order to make sure that NumPy is still installed in my project. All right, now Python code in Hex can become as complicated and convoluted and confusing as you possibly want it to be. You can write loops, functions, you can even define some classes that you guys can use throughout your projects. Now, the downside of this is that writing complex code can lead to a lot of variables just floating around all over the place. There's variable there, variable there, variable here, variable there, variables everywhere. And it can be really hard to keep track and or manage this. So how can we manage this? Well, similar to how SQL cells always have some output variable at the bottom of the cell, Python cells also have this output variable. Whenever you define a variable in Python, think about the cell that you define the variable in as the root cell for that. That variable. So let's actually take an example of what it looks like and how this works when we start using variables in downstream cells. But like in the last video, rather than write this code myself, I'm gonna use magic to write it for us. Magic is a set of AI tools in integrated inside of Hex to help speed up your data workflows. You can give magic a prompt in plain old English and based on the data, the variables and schemas in your project, it will make a context dependent prediction of what you want based on the prompt that you give it. So what I want to do is I want magic to import rand int from random and create a list of random numbers between let's say zero and 100 create a list of i'll say 10 random numbers between zero and 100 and we will run this and see what happens 
all right we got from random import rand it random numbers boom bam that looks great to me and let's keep that and then also we will print out random right at the bottom all right so cool so a few things just happened we see that we have a list of random 10 random numbers and we also see that we have two output variables right here at the bottom now again remember when you define a variable the cell that you define the variable in is the root reference for that variable so right now we see that we define the variable here and we have our output variable here at the bottom now if I were to use this variable in a downstream cell I wouldn't see the same output variable because I didn't actually define anything new I'm just creating a reference to the variable let me just show you guys what that looks like if I said random numbers and I just ran that again we see that we get the same list of random numbers right here but you may have noticed something pretty cool happen which is next to our random numbers variable we have this little one we have this one number next to it now what this number represents is it's telling you how many times this this variable is referenced in a downstream cell and each time you use this variable in a downstream cell you this number will keep increasing 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 telling you that you have that many references in your project so for example let's just let's get a list of all of our even numbers and I'm gonna use magic again I'm gonna say create a new list from our random numbers that contain even numbers only run that and let's see what magic comes up for us even numbers cool so it's saying that for every number in our number random numbers list check to see if the number is divisible by two and if it is that number is indeed even so since we defined a new variable in the cell we get a new output variable at the bottom of the cell so I can look at what our even numbers are and it looks like we got 28 96 0 for two and 40 which are indeed even numbers uh dope so if we go back up to our random numbers variable we see that we now have two references to this to this variable in our project and the nice thing about this is that we can hover over the variable and it will tell us where exactly in our project each variable or where these references are and this is super useful because like i said as projects get more and more complex you have variables floating around everywhere being shown where the variables are is really helpful because you can just quickly go to oh i have random numbers in code cell five boom let me just click on it and actually let me show you guys something really cool if i'm go if i go up and i click on this it brings me right there. Oh my God. I'm telling you all, I use, I use this religiously. All right, and the last thing that I wanna show you guys is how to actually change the name of some of the variables in your projects. Sometimes, you know, we make mistakes and maybe we wanna change the name of our vari variables from one thing to another. So for example, what if I wanted to change this random numbers variable just to say numbers, right? Now I could rename all these variables manually, but that could waste a lot of time. And also if I miss a reference that I could cause potential errors in my project, just causing me more and more of a a headache which is something that I don't want for myself and I don't want it for you so to change the name of your output variables in your project rather than using this rather than changing the name in the cell itself it's best practice to actually change the name of the output variable why should we do this well let me show you if I double click on the output variable I can go in edit mode and I'll type in numbers and watch what happens when I hit enter everywhere in my project the reference to that variable has been updated for me and i don't have to worry about tracking every single reference down myself all right so that was pretty cool but what if we have some variables in our project that are, we want to use to say hold sensitive information such as a password or an api key for example well we wouldn't want to put this in a normal variable like something like numbers for example because anyone could just print this out to the screen and start wreaking havoc on our behalf <laughs> no 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 we don't want that we want something more secure, something more safe, something more private. We need a secret. So on the sidebar, we see a tab called variables. And if we click on this tab, we can see a whole bunch of variable types. We have environment variables. We have our variable explorer, which just shows us the, the variables that have de been defined in our project so far. We can see some hex built-in variables, and we also see secrets at the top, which is something that I think we want to use. Now, a secret is a secure variable that is used to store sensitive information that you want to still use in your project, again, such as an API key or a password. Now, similar to how data connections can work on the project or workspace level you can also define workspace and project level secrets now if that reference doesn't make any sense a project level secret is just a secret that works in the project the working project only and a workspace level secret is a secret that can be used in any project to any user who has access all right so if I want to create a project level secret I can do so with this add button so I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna create a project level secret and I'm just gonna say like let's say for example this is is, is an API key or so API key and we'll just say that the key is some key private 
because I don't want it to be seen by anyone. So I'm going to create this variable and look what happens. So now we have a new variable in our variable explorer called API key, but we don't even get to see its value. We just get the secret value um, value indicator here. So that's really nice to let us know that these values are indeed secret and no one will be able to see them. The only way to actually check to see what this variable is, is to actually come up to our secret section and hit the I button, which will reveal the, the value of our secret. So something to keep in mind is that if you are sharing this project with others and you have secrets in your very secret variables in your project, make sure to only share with people that you trust and that you don't mind seeing these secret variables. Now again, just to really show you guys that these variables are indeed secret, let's try to print out our API key to the screen and I'll do so like this. And when I run this, we get secret value Boom. This just gives me some comfort knowing that I can have all these special sensitive variables in my project and not have to worry about them being exposed or being leaked or being shown to people who shouldn't be seeing them. Now, similar to a secret is an environment variable, which is used to store more general information. And to access an environment variable, you will need a library such as OS, since environment variables are available at the operating system level. So this can be kind of confusing if you're not familiar with the OS library or maybe even just environment variables in general. So let's show you guys an example of creating one just to show you how we can use this and how they work. So if I go down to my environment variables option, I can add a new environment variable by clicking the add button and I'm going to name this say like, uh, I'll just say parameter, very special. And I'm going to say my parameter value is 101 because this is parameter 101 class. All right. And I'll create this variable and right off the bat, we can see the value right here. So we can, we know that this is not very secret. And something that you might have noticed is that we actually don't see this variable in our variable explorer. And that is because this is an environment variable, like I said, which can't be accessed in the normal way. We would need some type of library such as OS. So to access a environment variable, I can import the OS library import OS and I can access this uh, variable in two different ways. I can say OS dot get env and then I will type in the name of my variable which is parameter run that and we should see 101 being printed out to the screen. Pretty cool. The other way I can access my environment variable is by doing env environ and this is kind of like a dictionary a dictionary like object where we can reference the variable by typing in a key and returning in returning a value. So I'll type in my key parameter and dope and now we see that we have the same exact variable printing to our screen so cool all right now something just to keep in mind is that environment variables like you can see here are not meant to store sensitive information since they are just shown to the screen and anyone can access them so if you do need to store sensitive information i highly encourage you to use secrets over environment variables all right man we got another one down again i applaud you guys for making it all the way to the end with me it warms my heart now as always i want to give you guys something to take away from this video and it's this episode some things to keep in mind are python cells and hex work the same way they do in most notebook based tools with some added perks and benefits hex comes with plenty of pre-installed python packages for you guys to use out of the box and you can always install new ones if we don't have the one that you guys want to use python cells have an output variable that show you how many times it's reference in a downstream cell and you can use this as a really easy way to rename the variables throughout your project. You can use secrets to store sensitive information such as API keys or passwords and you can use environment variables to store more general information such as project configurations or parameters for your project. All right guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed being in your presence. In the spirit of today's video comment down below with your favorite snake Mine is not a python, it's going to be a black mamba because they just kind of cool, you know. Uh, anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, you guys might turn into a cat like I did. And it's not, it's not fun. Trust me. Anyway, I'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs> Peace.